Hello, it is voiceover Kika here. Welcome to week five of my photo challenge series. Today, I wanna to show you how to take cell timer pictures with your phone and how I shot and edited this only using my phone. I recently learned two mega helpful tips when taking cell timer pictures on your phone. So I'm gonna show you how you can connect your phone to your laptop so you can use that as a field monitor, which is mega helpful when you're gonna take your own photos. And also a little trick how you can get much better quality photos on your phone with a little simple trick. All right, let's get to it. When you're gonna take a photo on your phone, it's super important to be mindful about light. I usually like to hold up my hand and see how the light is gonna look if I'm gonna take a self-portrait and how the shadows and light are gonna hit my face. For my do-it-yourself backdrop, I used a clothing rack and then I just hung this velvet curtain on top of it to form a backdrop. And I really like this cotton candy pink color. I think it's gonna work well. Then I attached it with these hair clips so it will keep in place and I will probably step on it anyways at some point. Once that was in place, I realized I needed a bench and something to put my selfie stick on because it's not tall enough. Uh, so I used this bench and yeah, arguably I should have done this first and <laughs> so I wouldn't have to do this little acrobatic number here. And I placed the bench in front of me and when again, you're gonna do a self portrait with your phone, do make sure that you have enough space between your phone and yourself as the phone tends to distort the face a little bit. I also grabbed a smaller table because I'm gonna be using my laptop as my field monitor. So I want to have something that I can put my laptop on and that's gonna help me when I'm gonna take the photo. Here's a tip how to get much better quality photos when taking pictures on your phone. So we're gonna use the app Lightroom, which is free to download. Then you're gonna go into the camera icon and you're gonna switch from auto to professional. And up here, you see it says JPEG. You want to click that and instead of JPEG, turn it on to DNG. And DNG stands for digital negative and is basically the raw image format. So that way you make sure that you get the raw data from the camera sensor without processing and it will preserve much more detail in your photo. In here, you also have the option to manually focus on your subject. And there's this really cool feature. So when you use the focus and the manual focus, it actually highlights everything that is in focus in this green glow, which I found really, really helpful. You can also go in and set the ISO and exposure compensation and the shutter speed and all these things that you normally can't do with the iPhone. So do make sure that you use the Lightroom app when you're gonna take your photos. Also, one more reason to use the Lightroom app is that you'll have this overlay grid, which will just help you to make sure that all your lines and the horizon is straight when you're setting up your phone. I'm going to be using this selfie stick slash tripod for my photo shoot. But if you don't have a tripod for your phone, I have a whole video on how you can make that all with stuff you probably have at home. So I'll link that in the description below. Now, one big challenge when taking a self portrait is you can't really see how it's gonna look because you're in front of the camera instead of behind. So I'm gonna share a super, super helpful tip that I recently learned, how you can turn your laptop into a field monitor. So basically just use the same cable that you would when you charge your phone and connect your phone to your laptop. Then for the iPhone at least, you can go into the QuickTime player, start a new movie recording, and then next to the recording button, just click the little triangle and then you can choose your phone. And you can do this for Android phones as well. You can just Google how to mirror your phone to your laptop and you'll find the steps. This is so helpful because now you can see what's going on in your camera on your laptop. So you don't have to run back and forth and you can make sure that it's gonna look good. Because I'm just working with this plain backdrop, I wanted to create some depth in my photo. So I'm gonna use these flowers. And then my main prop is this face mac with flowers that I just crafted with flowers and then some sewing needles. And it looks a little dicey on the backside. So I think I'm gonna have to be careful when using it. A really good tip if you're struggling with not having enough light is to make a do-it-yourself reflector just with a cardboard box and attaching some tin foil to it and this can make a huge difference when you're taking a self-portrait uh, so you just get some more light on your face as this time of year it can be very dark. 
I actually didn't end up using my do-it-yourself reflector so much it became more a laptop stand but I just wanted to share this tip with you in case you were struggling with not having enough light as I know that this is a pretty common problem. Next step is to get your composition right. So I played around a lot with the placement of the flowers and where to have them in relation to my face and to create that depth in the photo. Once you're happy with your placement, click these little three dots up here, go to the timer and I set it to 10 seconds. Now to get yourself sharp in the photo is always a little bit of a tricky pickle. And first up, I tried the manual focus that I showed to you in the beginning with the read glow but actually those photos turned out blurry and for some reason it just didn't work out so well. What I ended up doing instead was I would hold up my hand in the spot where my face was gonna be then I would press the camera release button and take the spot where my hand was so then the camera would autofocus and I tried to be in the same spot where my hand was to make sure that it was gonna be sharp it was a little bit of trial and error and because I didn't want to run back and forth, I just tried to get my finger on that spot where the camera release button was. Um, but actually this worked out fairly well and, and these pictures turned out much sharper and I actually found this to be much easier to do this way and let the phone do the autofocus instead. Next, we're gonna edit the photo using Lightroom on the phone. And the first thing I usually do is I crop the photo to be an aspect ratio of four by five. This works really well for portraits. And also this is what I usually recommend if you're gonna post a photo on Instagram as that's the biggest aspect ratio and it will take the most space up on the screen. Next, I go in and do small tweaks to exposure and I find that the phone usually tends to overexpose a little. So you might want to turn down exposure a little and also highlights. The next thing I want to do is to increase the saturation a little bit and also the vibrance. And the main difference between saturation and vibrance is that vibrance doesn't treat all pixels equally. So vibrance only adjusts the least saturated colors in the image. And this is great when you don't want to blow out any colors as if you use the saturation, you can easily do. Then one of my favorite tools is to use these tone curves and usually I will start by making a slight S curve. So I take down the highlights a little bit and raise the shadows a tiny bit. And this is very much a matter of preference. Uh, I also like to preserve some contrast in there, but then create this a bit vintage and faded look by taking up my shadows and the blacks. But you also want to make sure that you do have some contrast in there so it doesn't become too faded. And this is something I usually spend quite a lot of time to just try to get it just right. You can also use the color tone curves to dramatically change the look and feel of your photo. And I like to play around with these and see what look I like best for this photo. Next up, I will go into the color mix panel and I usually like to go through each color individually and play around with the different sliders. For this photo, I was going for a very vintage and faded look. So I wanted to make it quite warm and make sure that the reds don't go too much to the violet and purple and kind of a bluish tone, but make sure that they were quite warm. And one good tip to keep in mind is to make sure that your skin tone doesn't go too crazy when you're doing the oranges. So, and sometimes what also helps if you find that your face or skin is quite dark is you can increase the luminance of the orange slider. After this, I might go into vibrance and saturation one more time and just see how that looks and to make sure that my colors are really in place. Because I was going for a very film look, I also put in quite a lot of grain in this photo. And I also increased some clarity and even some texture in here and also a slight bit of vignette. Because the iPhone tends to distort facial features and often make the face appear larger, I used the distortion tool to just make it look a little bit more realistic. One super effective tool that I really recommend to use is the selective edits where you can go in and select an area of the photo and then only edit that area. I used the brush tool and then just selected my facial area and increased the exposure and shadows as I wanted to make sure that this is really the main focus of my photo. I also went in and took a smaller brush and then just chose the area around my eye and up the saturation a little bit and also sharpened the whole image. All right, so here is how the photo was before and after editing it.
thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed these tips and that they were of value to you now you essentially know how to take pro and super gorgeous photos just using your phone and editing them on your phone on Thursday, there is going to be a new photo challenge for week five. Make sure that you check out the other videos if you haven't and subscribe to my channel to get notified every time there's a new video. And yeah, if you're gonna post anything in this photo challenge, do make sure to use the hashtag Kikas photo challenge so I can come and see your work. Thanks so much and I will see you on Thursday. Bye. Bonnet, hello, there's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet. Hello.